What's going on, boys? Today we are talking ENTPs. Just general observations because there are not many of them kicking around from what I've seen. And when we do talk, we have little to discuss. The first thing to discuss is their promiscuity. I don't know how ESTPs got the sex-crazed stereotype, because ENTPs, from what I've seen, are way more sleep-aroundy. And what's interesting about ENTP promiscuity is the way it's like they are strangling pleasure out of promiscuity. Not just sexually, but other pleasures. It's like they're wringing these pleasure sources for every drop available. Like, like it's not gonna exist tomorrow. I'm unsure whether that has something to do with tertiary FE, but I'll bet it has something to do with inferior SI. Because while you don't see this level of promiscuity in ENFPs, you do see the same sort of dragon chasing, as it were. This isn't exclusive just to male ENTPs from a specific country or culture, either. This seems to be a male and female ENTP thing worldwide. It almost seems to be a form of communication for them. Because in ENTP communication, there's a lot of shaking people. When an INTP is trying to figure someone out, they will ask them questions, they will compare them against other people, they will cross-check the person's opinions against other opinions, they'll set things up, etc. When an ENTP is trying to figure someone out, they will get a quick assessment of the sort of person they seem to be. This is this kind of person. But are they? And then they grab them by the shoulders, verbally, and shake them apart to see whether or not this person is the sort of person they purport to be or their vibes give off. I think this is one of the reasons ENTPs almost always make that horrible statement. The sort of statement an FI type is going to get offended at for this person even suggesting this, and an FE type is going to get shaky and, oh shit, that happened, oh fuck me, dude, get away from me. I don't want to be around you, I don't want to be associated with you, thing. I think they're doing it to figure out what you are, not just who you are. And what's interesting about ENTP's horribleness, the uniqueness of their horribleness, is rarely is it malevolent. There's always this sense they're suggesting, if you are this, you can back it up. If you can't, maybe you need something like this, this statement, this horrible offense to you to begin building the tools to back it up or to be that person. That's the other thing I've noticed about ENTPs. Underneath their exterior, an exterior that's a lot like fog with heat lightning and thorny vines in it, they're warm, warm people. ENTPs are hard people to pin because I think they have nowhere near the degree of individuality they present, and they hide that with wild lives, interesting conversation, and knowledge. They have stores of knowledge, if you didn't know, but beneath all that, 
they take so much care with people. And it's not like INTPs. INTPs are bastards. They'll take extreme care with people, but only if they really care about them. ENTPs seem to take care, careful care, with most people. But it's the sort of care people don't notice or appreciate. Right? You won't notice ENTP is the one who suggested you do this thing that is now saving you a lot of time or money, but you will remember that one time they said something you took as rude. You'll never know all the care ENTP is taking behind the scenes to ensure you aren't miserable in your new stressful job, but you will remember the time ENTP disagreed with you about something that you ended up being wrong about, and that's bothering you still. You won't let it go. On one hand, people annoy me for not recognizing or appreciating how nurturing ENTPs are. On the other hand, ENTPs annoy me because you wouldn't end up in this situation in which so many people hate you if you could just keep your mouth shut. But if you did keep your mouth shut, nobody would like you, so life sucks. Another notable thing about ENTPs is the ease with which they lie. Now, TE types in general tend to be good at lying. But their lying always carries the sense of I am telling you something untrue so I can get an advantage over you. It is bold-faced, predatory lying. FE types don't bold-faced lie as much, but they do edit facts. It's just as predatory, but if you catch an F.E. type in a lie, it's harder to pin it as a lie because it is based in truth. ENTP lying is interesting because it is a combination of TE type lying and F.E. type lying. They will tell you something blatantly untrue the way a TE type will, with the effectiveness of a TE type, but rarely will it be predatory the way a TE type would lie, as in I'm telling you this to get over on you. But it's also like FE lying because they use facts. They tell you something that is untrue, or their position on it is untrue, using actual facts. It's hard to explain. Sometimes it's the devil's advocate thing, which they absolutely do. That is a stereotype that is absolutely true. And they do it so effectively they make you believe it, then don't tell you that they agree with you. Which is another reason people end up hating them, but that one's kind of their fault. But as for lying lying, they lie with the effectiveness of a TE type, they do it with the fact-basedness of an F.E. type, but rarely do they seem to lie for dark evil. They lie so people don't get hurt, or they lie and make sure people don't get hurt. As effective as a T.E. type using the methods of an F.E. type. Strange. Side note, they have a distinct criminal bent I don't see in other types. This isn't to say all ENTPs are criminals. This is to say over half of the ENTPs I've known in my life have been criminals, and they have been good at it. As for their temperament, most ENTPs seem to have Enneagram 7 and 8 energy. They like fighting and winning. An ENTP says, I want to live this way. And then they scrape and fight 
and manage to live that way. And ENTJ says, I want to live this way. And then they go and live that way and get very good at living that way. Never live this way. Get so good at living that way they never stop. And then they die or shoot themselves in their 50s. Regretting their decision never to live this way. INTPs say, I want to live this way. And then they fantasize about living this way while never leaving their dead-end jobs. INTJs say, I want to live this way. They yell a bunch, somehow end up living this way, then, through a series of bad decisions, fuck it up, and then they cry a lot. ENTPs are the only one of the NTs who seem able to achieve the sort of lives they want in exactly the ways they want them. At least generally as a type. This isn't to say any NT, any type, can, uh, can achieve their dreams. ENTPs seem to get where they want to go more often. Unfortunately, that seems to mean nothing in the end because they still feel lonely and depressed. Tertiary FE makes them engage with many people. They have they, they enjoy meeting all sorts of people. And any and TI, the clusterfuck of a function combination it is, makes them do and say things. TI is a pungent, stinky function if you aren't careful, that make people hate them, even though, tertiary FE, all they want to do is engage with people happily. So they overexpose themselves to people, and it's like they overdose on people. ENTPs need to be around other people, but they stink, they smell bad, so people hate them, and unlike ENTJs, ENTPs are sensitive to that, and it fucks them up inside. At which point, they either double down on their stinkiness, and antagonize people, and that becomes their engagement, which makes them even unhappier, or they keep people at arm's length, being physically close to them, and trying to keep the mood up, and making people happy, but being emotionally distant, which makes them feel permanently lonely and afraid of having that hurt happen again. And it's even worse, because unlike INTP, if people are oxygen, INTPs are like alligators. They can go underwater for long periods of time without needing to resurface. ENTPs are like actual human beings trying to hold their breath underwater. They need to come up regularly to get that oxygen, that connection. But it seems like it's generally a painful or combative affair each time. I think all these troubles wrap up in that inferior SI. ENTPs are like alligators in the sense they can go without stability and consistency for a long time. It's amazing how inconsistent and happily inconsistent, at least superficially, ENTPs can be. They can do wild, they can accomplish wild things without any semblance of a system, without any anger. But they get so accustomed to living in that flurry of fucking and talking and running and accomplishing, they never develop anything to come back to, to hold on to. And I think that contributes to that constant feeling of emptiness and loneliness which, without work, they're never going to develop, because everything else is just dandy in the flurry. It's just this one thing. So, to summarize, ENTPs are Dionysian free spirits who aren't actually free-spirited. They're painfully nihilistic, maybe even more than INTPs, because they've gone out and done all these things, 
and that shit still eats at them. So they hide it all with flares and fog and misdirection, sometimes rudeness, but they are caring and warm inside and want to share that with other people and do, but people don't appreciate it because ENTPs are so good at misdirection, they misdirect people right into hating them. The next time an ENTP hits you in the face with something that might hurt your feelings, think about why they might be doing it and look for any potential good they might be doing. I guarantee you'll find it. But that about rippity wraps this one up. I hope you enjoyed watching because I certainly enjoyed making it. I am using a lot of new pept. I haven't slept. Like if you enjoyed because it helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't because we do this shit sometimes and comment your thoughts because I love hearing from you. Are you an ENTP? Do you know any ENTPs? What are your experiences as one or with one? But thanks again for watching, everybody. We have a lot of fun on this channel. So much fun, in fact, you can use it recreationally, which is weird. Because you have fun, not use fun, but now you are in a state of using fun. Wild. But that's how much we have on this channel, and I look forward to doing this with you guys again in the future. Thank you.